What's going on everyone? It's your boy Big D here and it's time to review another movie. This time this is the latest comedy from Kevin James. It just got released, man. This is a non-spoiler review for Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. That's right, I went to go see the movie, man, because Kevin James came down to my city, Corpus Christi, Texas, like four weeks ago, man, and I saw him down at the Selena Auditorium, and uh, it paid $45 for a ticket. He was only on stage for an hour. I guess he was doing a tour, you know, stand-up comedy, and I was in the same room as Kevin James. He's funny. He does the same jokes a lot, but... You know, he's funny, man, so let's get right into it. I'm not going to spoil nothing. Let me just tell you real quick the synopsis of this movie real quick. Just a quick, like, little short paragraph of um, the plot that surrounds it. After six years of keeping our mall safe, Paul Blart has earned a well-deserved vacation. He heads to Vegas with his teenage daughter before she heads off to college. She doesn't even look like she's supposed to even be at freaking the end of high school. What do you mean? And also, but safety never takes a holiday, and when duty calls, Blart answers. Oh my gosh. Let's get right into it, guys. I, I have to get into it. Alright, first off, I'm going to get started with my pros and then my cons. Now, first off, when I walked into this the theater, I had a feeling, like, I enjoy Paul Blart Mall Cop, the first one. I It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. And, you know, I watched it when it first came out. And, Burned UVD when it first came out, and um, I enjoyed it. You know, I I am a fan of Kevin James. I, I don't like to hate on him, but he's had some downs the past couple of years. I mean, he's he's had his ups, he's had his downs, and this is definitely an up. And then the sequel came, and everyone was like, "We don't need a sequel." Actually, I'm happy that they made a sequel. But now, after watching it, we should stop. We should stop and take a look back into the history of the past 30 to 40 to 50 years of comedy and just sequels really needed. Alright, first off, it's funny. Yes, it's funny, but it's not as funny as the first one. Uh, Kevin James, he brings his all, man, but it, it, it's not enough. He doesn't actually bring his all at all, but he's kind of obnoxious. You know, Paul Blart's not even really a likable at some point in the movie, but for what he does, it's funny. I mean, there are, there are moments where we laugh. The audience laughed. I had a full theater, man. It was fun. Families were everywhere, and I was just there sitting, and I was like, ha ha. Funny. There were some moments where I just laughed out loud, man. And other than that, there was like four or five laugh out loud moments. That's it. Um, supporting characters, of course, Gary Valentine, Kevin James' brother, is in this movie. Um, other supporting characters, David Henry from Wizard to Waverly Place. Yeah, just, I mean... Supporting characters, they're interesting. Um, you know, the, the actors try to do something with their comedy role, and they there there's a few that actually work, and there's a few that just don't. And you're like, really? Uh, they must be playing a stupid character. Or it's like David Henry's character, he's not really even likable. You're kind of like, this guy's really stupid. Just no. I can't even tell if you're good, if you're bad. You just suck. I, and I hate to say that about David Henry, but I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Let's, let's be honest, guys. Um, the fighting there. Let me just say that Paul Blart, when he takes down somebody, you know, if you've seen the trailers or something, it's interesting. Paul Blart, Mall Cop 1, that was fun to see him fighting and doing something, you know. This, you know, welcome to the show, that type of thing, man. I loved it. And this time, the fighting is interesting. And there is actually one of the final battle scenes, I'll just say this, is amazing. I, I, I enjoyed that final battle scene. Head on collision, baby. It's amazing. And then after that, it kind of just got ruined, which I'll get to my cons in a moment. Also, I do like the directing, man. I, I enjoy the directing. This, this movie has been directed by um, Andy Fickman. Now, I'm not saying that the cinematography is beautiful, but for the Vegas landscape, and, you know, they showed some pretty cool places in Vegas. Never been there, but I know there are some beautiful shots. And it looks interesting, man. I like the way he did shoot the film and how it was the lighting and everything. Like, all that, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it's not a masterpiece, but for what it was, pretty good. And also the set pieces and the way where Blart went and, you know, they actually filmed it in a hotel. So, or casino hotel. You know, that was really awesome. So, 
Now, my cons. First off, the first movie had very good music, man. From ELO, Mr. Blue Sky, to freaking Kiss at the End, Detroit Rock City. I mean, it had a lack of music, this one. Very much a lack of music, and I was kind of pissed off. Like, they went to that hipster type of teenage music, like, um... I already forgot, man. It's basically like... I forgot. I can't... Because it's a lack of music. They did like that teenage boom, boom, boom. You know, like people, what happened to the 70s, the 80s, man? Put on some good music, baby. Get me in the mood. But no, they don't. So it's a lack of music, and I'm very displeased about that. Las Vegas. Okay, why does every sequel, I know Las Vegas is beautiful in the movie, but why does everyone have to go to China or, or, or Korea or Vegas or Idaho? Why don't you just stay at the mall, man? I would have rather seen you go to the mall again than um go to Vegas. I'm just no. No. No more Vegas. I mean, I saw the gambler with Mark Wahlberg. I mean, no more of it. Uh, yes, uh, we're here to steal paintings. Uh -huh. okay. I'm not going to even get into it. David Henry's character, I oh, God, he sucked. I'm sorry. It's it's true. He sucked. Um, there are stupid moments, and uh, a character who was in the first movie, who was the girl who was like at Victoria's Secret, and she was fighting with this girl, or both girls were fighting over a bra size, and she's like, I got a date tonight. You know that? Remember that scene from the first one? And Paul Bart's like, Whoa, what's the issues, ladies, and all that, and. Um, the villain from the first one is watching, and he's kind of just looking, he's like, back up, back up, you know, that type of thing. The girl was like, oh, well, I only have one bra left to sell. That girl, she was in the pulp art too, but she's a totally different character. I'm the only one who probably caught that. Why is she a different character? It's the same actress from the first one, who had a small part, and the second one has a different character. What are you doing? I noticed that. Why would you use the same actress? You could have just used, I thought she was going to be like, oh, I remember you from the mall. But she didn't. That means she's a different character. Why? Why is she a different character? It bothers me. I was like, oh, no, now the whole movie I thought about that. I was like, damn you, Fickman. Um, other than that, man, stupid decisions. There's a lot of stupid decisions in here, by the way. And they make the villains look stupid. Some of the villains, these guys have silent weapons. You aim bad. What's the point of you doing a, 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 a casino heist if you suck at shooting your weapon at a fat guy? What? Why is this movie G or something? Why can't it be PG-13 at least? Have, add a little sauce, a little flavor, flavor to the flame, you know what I'm saying? I mean, give me something, man. But uh, the only pros really... Kevin James has a few moments that shine. There's funny moments, and definitely uh, there's a scene with a villain and Kevin James where they go at it like, you're crazy, oh, I'm crazy. If you watch it, then you know what I'm talking about, man. Or if you see it, that was one of the good, uh, best scenes. And the fighting scenes were all good. Uh, overall set pieces and supporting characters are interesting, yet not shown as much as I rather would have seen the supporting characters than Mr. Blart. Overall, I'm going to give this movie a C, a 7.10 out of a 10. Secondarily, a D plus, a 6.75 out of a 10. It's an okay movie with a side of the... Eh, you know, eh. Is it worth watching? Yes, but if you're going to take out your family, if you're single or looking for a date movie, this is not the movie for it. I'm sorry, it's just not... Well, it depends what, who you are. I mean, if you like comedy and everything, like, if you're one of those where a family type of comedy, yeah, you're going to like it. But if you're just, you know, yeah, let's go out somewhere. Paul Blart? Yeah, you read my mind. No, don't, don't do it. Also, if you're a family man, take the family out. They'll enjoy it. Oh, yeah, they'll laugh, you know, because life. But, um, if you, but if you do like the first one, like, if you do, like, many people don't like the first one, but if you do, watch the second one. Just watch it. It's only an hour and, like, 25 minutes, so you get it over with. Um, but overall, worth watching in theaters? No. Don't go see this movie in theaters. Don't even... Just wait for DVD rental. Get it at Redbox or Netflix.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope all of you enjoyed. Comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite part of Paul Blart. Don't spoil. Uh, make sure to put a spoiler if you're going to say. But if you've seen the movie, let me know what did you think about it. What are your pros and cons? And what's your score for Paul Blart Mall Cop 2? Will there be a third one? I don't know. Will Spock be with you always? See you all for the next one. Age of Ultron.